And that should do it. <laughs> well, so Joe, I programmed it to say that. Mm -hmm. Oh, hello. Welcome to Lombardi Labs. Mm -hmm. I'm Professor Lombardi and this is Sojo. And we welcome you to join us during various scientific investigations and explorations. We are continuing with robotics, but this time we're gonna focus in on programming. Sojo, please, I'll explain. So what exactly is programming? Programming. The process of writing commands for a computer and or robot to follow. I'm standing before the school where I teach sixth grade science and an after school class on robotics using Lego Mindstorms. And the first step in programming is to understand the objectives or goals of the robot and its needs. Now let's see what this looks like with my robotics class. With this first step in mind, students have to build their robots that will act like a rover exploring the surface of Mars. Inspired by the, re uh, the real Sir Joyner and her descendants, students will have to program their bots to approach rocks and make contact without displacement. Five teams are competing for the most points. Their mission, which they chose to accept, is to program their EV3 robots to navigate and contact as many rock targets as possible. The more rocks they successfully contact, the more points. Step two, design the program. What specific task do you need your robot to perform? The EV3 bots will need to precisely maneuver towards two rock samples. Speed, a combination of power output and measurement, and use of the touch sensor need to be worked out. Remember, LEGO designed the overall program, yet it's the students that design what they want their bots to accomplish. For movement, some teams decide on power levels, while other teams use rotations or seconds. Finding the best placement for the touch sensor is another strategy. Which combination of strategies will prove to be the most successful? Step three, code the program. After the program has been designed, it must be coded or written, and the right language must be chosen. Not exactly the language that Sojo is speaking, but certainly one that the robot will understand. Lego has the language already in place, so it's more about the students working with this language and choosing the appropriate commands. This is what the class is all about. Programming! Measurements and mathematics are made as accurately as possible. This ultimately translates into their programming. Each team understands these stakes. One coding error and their bot goes off course, misses their target or crashes, and then it's boom, arrivederci. That's all folks, hasta la vista, buddy. Step four, test the program. This is where trial and error will tell you what is working and what is not. Correct any errors and remove the bugs. This testing goes back and forth from the programming until it gives the students exactly what they need. But the clock is ticking. Let's get ready to roll! All five teams ready themselves for their final mission. Who will come in contact with the most rocks, earning the most points? And we're off! Team one gets the first rock sample, but oh, not the second. Mission accomplished on rock sample A. That's better than nothing, all right. Team two steps up, and oh, a tough break, kids. Team three begins, and Drills the rock? Sorry. No points for you. Well, you got the rock. Team four is up. And, oh, oh they suffer a similar fate. Is this supposed to turn that way? Epic fail. Team five is up. They have the first rock sample. Do you believe in miracles? And the second. Team five wins with four points. Team five wins. Team five wins. Step five, document and maintain the program. Keep track of your robot's ongoing performance and maintain it. 
This is why we get those annoying yet necessary updates for our video games, apps, and other programs. Ah, speaking of updates. Oh, later. Later. Later! What? Where did all this come from? Hey! So, Joe. So, Joe, I told you this doesn't work with you. Until next time. Battery is dying, Senator.